Hello, be baseball world. We are back. And by we, I mean, of course, me, Neil, B A W G, and the strongest fan in the history of all fly sports, Seth Bam Bam Clark. Ah, uh, Neil Dog again. Just blessed to be with you, my friend. You know. Got some nutrients for you now, Nick. What's happening? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I got, you know, I got the, no nutrients. You're the one that always says no inside jokes. And bam, right out of the gate. Nutrients. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, man. Not going that down nutrients that. Thing, not going that down nutrients that thing always sticks in my head, man. I'm sorry. It's a, but no, man, doing well, Neil Doc. Doing did you well. uh, did you get hammered with the hail out where you live? Were you, uh, just yeah, it was, it does, not, not hammered, but it definitely was out here. Uh, look, it, it here, here in California, we we just hope it rains in one day <laughs> eventually. But to like, I, I, it, you know, it's probably every like third year that I experience <laughs> hail. But I was, yeah, I right. told, I told you when we were on the phone, I had to get a workout in before the 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 show, right. and I was finishing my my the end of my workout doing some squats and some jumpy jacks outside when the hell started coming down so i was literally literally doing jumpy jacks and when my <laughs> arms were going up i was like slapping little uh, pellets up in the air <laughs> so no hell is so cool man. hell is fun man. it's always little hell we don't get the big or yeah no i mean i don't want anybody to think i experience like big pellets that hurt me or anything, uh, it's california it's hell. i've never worked out in hell before it's fun it's california <laughs> hell. all yeah. right all right so we got a big show ahead of us we got oh we guests. got guests this time we got, we got two guests from two different team coaches one's coach and a player man we're going to talk about their careers and then we're going to end the show talking about some some real life facts so we got a big show ahead, so let's bring in the guests now. We're going to start with a player slash coach from the Tyler Tigers, Larry Reed. Welcome to the show, Larry. Long timer. Yeah, been a long time. Well, when, when did you start up? Like in mid, like around 94, 96, somewhere in that range? 94. 94, all right. All right. Well, we're going to dive deeper into that shortly. Right. We also have, I believe, the head coach, right, of the Bayou City Heat, JC. That's, that's the yeah, how's it going? I was JC instructed Carter. to just stick to JC. So any guests that outside of people want to know what JC stands for, you got to just make something up. Uh, he just coach. <laughs> just, yeah, it, it, yeah. it stands for just coach, man. It's just, just coach. coach. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Just Welcome, that's JC. Good. Hey, how's it going, man? Y'all doing all right? Yeah, going, nice. doing good now. Doing good now. Thanks for joining us, both of you. Appreciate it very much. Love talking beatball with uh, people, getting out here each week and uh, learning new stuff about players that have been around for a long time. I, I did ask Larry real quickly, though, uh, what was your first year, JC? I remember you back around like 08 or a little bit before that. Oh, a little. Uh, no, no, 05 even actually my uh my first year was 2001 i was uh oh, wow. started off as yeah i was 11 years old at the time they see a long timer you don't you don't you don't necessarily realize that but jc's got 20 years in the league man he's a vet man. yeah i uh I, I can't remember if it was like 05, 06, but after it was probably 06 after oklahoma city broke up frank fazio went and played with you guys yeah, and uh, you and Frank and I had breakfast one morning. That was the first time I remember meeting you. You're like 18, 19, playing football in junior college. Yeah, I remember right. Yeah, middle linebacker or something like no, that. Oh, hell no, hell Yeah, this oh, big right. ass dude. Man, he's my he's, he's my my one tech that I want for the Dallas Cowboys. Man, this is a big dude. Yeah. Like I said, I'm a, I'm a big guy, and and there was a time out in the field that I ran into JC on, on a defensive play. And he did not move. I stopped. I, I mean, it was boom. <laughs> I, it was like, oh, man. See, I don't ever want to run into you. There was no Rated give. Field. Yeah, right? There is no give on JC. There are, there are not a lot of people that could say they got ran down by Seth in the field and, and remained standing, I don't think. <laughs> they didn't even move, man. They didn't even <laughs> don't, don't, don't buy it off more than you can chew, young man. <laughs> 
So let's dive in first with you, Larry. You said you start out in 94. I remember the World Series being in Fort Lauderdale, Florida that year, but I don't remember the Tigers being there. Were the Tigers in Fort Lauderdale? All right. No, we was not in uh, Fort Lauderdale in 94. Actually, I was supposed to be playing with uh, Fort Worth, but uh, I had a little daughter then, so I couldn't, uh, I wasn't able to make it with them. With them. That's good. That was the team that knocked us out in 94. So we wouldn't have liked you very much. <laughs> we all, yeah. <laughs> well, so, yeah, so did, so you, did you go? So you didn't go in 94, but you practiced with them? Uh, uh, actually, we our first game was in Fort Worth in 94. Uh, and um, they picked uh, me to go to Fort Lauderdale. Uh, in that turn uh, for the World Series, then I wasn't able to make it. And so, because uh, Frank, he trained uh, the Tyler Tigers, you know, when we first got started. All right. All right. And so, and, and so the Tigers start, Tyler started in 94, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. But we didn't uh, get a chance to go to the World Series. Uh, actually, we went to Denver, yeah. but it was a, it was a mix up, on, uh, mix up on our paperwork, and our first actual World Series was in Austin when I first met the West Coast Dogs. <laughs> you actually yeah. met me, Henry, and Christina in '95. Yeah, I was gonna say you guys, I, at, <laughs> I ran yeah. you guys at a at a McDonald's or whatever, man. I was yeah. like, hey, man, what's up with y'all? <laughs> I I did not remember that you guys weren't able to play in '95, but I do remember you guys showed up. You had like. 30 people in one van and like two <laughs> ho- and like two yeah, ho- yeah, right. two hotel rooms. You guys had two hotel rooms reserved or something like that, I heard. Yes, that's that's true. <laughs> hey, you got, yeah, we, 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 that, that was us. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I will never forget rolling into that McDonald's, man. We were with Tyler, boy, like, wow, we Who's this? <laughs> <laughs> that is so funny. But the other thing I, I remember this, the most about that was in 96 at the Austin uh, World Series. I, I remember Seth and I being so into when you guys did your cheer before the games and after games, you guys had like clapping and <laughs> like, you know, I mean, you guys had like a whole arranged like musical production and Seth and I are sitting there snapping like, man, <laughs> they're going to take our swagger away. Cause we, we took pride in having it be a team with swagger and you guys over there throwing down beats with your opening cheer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Man. So tell us a little bit about the Tyler Tigers getting uh, started. Oh, they get started. Stuff. Yeah. We, um, we got started, like I said, in 94. Um, uh, it was a guy, uh, worked at the, East Texas light out for the blind. He just uh, he started the team and then he uh, dropped it. And I I got introduced to Michael Garrett and Michael Garrett, you know, and Frank Medino. They uh, helped us get started and you know just kind of uh, guiding us through uh, through the NBBA. And um, like I said, we went to Denver. Uh, with 30 people on the van, <laughs> and, and, and then we was um, had a secretary was on the team that didn't turn in our paperwork, uh, the what we needed to participate. Um, and so we went to Denver, I did the long ball and the fastest runner in Denver, and after that year, it was a letdown because I thought everything was right and it wasn't. And 96, when we got it right, we went to Austin where we we stayed at the Red Line Inn and I met the West Coast Dogs and we had, uh, it was very hot there. The ground was hard and it was like, I mean, we, we, had, we had a lot of we had a lot of spirit, even though we was, you know, getting hell beat out of us. But, you know, we had that, you know, that, you know, never say die spirit. And um, 
I remember meeting, uh, it was Bam Bam. We was doing the coin toss, and he's like, I think we we had last bad. Bam Bam said, are you sure you want to do that? <laughs> <laughs> and and, I, and then I thought, like, yeah, we got last bad. I, I, I like, yeah, we got last bad. So I was like, I thought I got, we got our field, and uh, I said, well, that wasn't a real good idea, but okay, <laughs> here we go. And, but, you know, then I, uh, we just, it was very, it was very hard, you know, coming up. You had a young team, right? Back then? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Real, real young, yeah. Real, young real young I mean, real young team. Um, we, um, we had a lot of ups and downs and a lot of people them you know believe in us and they said it wouldn't work but you know i just kept on telling the team let's hang on in there uh brighter days is ahead of us you know we you, just got to stick together what was it people like close to the team telling you that or like outsiders it was it was, it was both you know right. the one surrounding the team um and fundraising yeah um uh not only we had to battle in tyler uh with fundraising and trying to stick together and do something positive in the neighborhood in, in the community rather but we had to battle you know wherever we went you know yeah it was always like an uphill battle and we just you know i just kept telling the team we're gonna make it we're going to make it, you know. <laughs> We're going to keep the spirit. Whether we win, lose, or draw, we always have to be a good, you know, we got to be a good loser to be a great winner. Right. You know, uh, uh, yeah. what, go ahead. Oh, well, I, I, I wanted to, what I like about that, Larry, is uh, something Seth threw out on the show. And, and I, 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 I don't know, I, as long as I've known Seth uh, over 30 years now is the first time I ever heard him say that. And I thought it was so profound, but it's exactly what you're talking about. Cause at one point uh, a guest brought up that what he loved, loved about the world series is the fight everybody shows. And, and Seth pointed out that that fight like kind of starts because we're coming from the ground up. Like, you know, we aren't players who were born to play beat baseball. We didn't grow <laughs> up, you know, watch, wanting to play beat baseball. We ended up here because we went through a tragedy or, or were born blind or whatever. So, like Seth had pointed out, it's like, man, the, the thing about, you know, all beat ball teams, it's like they, they are starting from the bottom. So fighting to get to the World Series and fighting through it, a five-day tournament, that's almost the easy part, What you know, once you get past the other stuff. Right. And, and yeah. Keep going, Larry. We, we had a lot of, we had, uh, we had a lot of people in the, you know, in the MBBA that um, when a lot of people was, uh, you know, against us, but we also had a lot of people that were, you know. Had your you back know, also. You know, steering us in the right direction. You know, yeah. just hang on in there, um, and you know, just keep pushing, and you know, you you will get there. Um, no matter what people say about you, as long as you know, we we don't have to act like they act. You know, we just need to keep on supporting them and showing them love until one day they'll love you. They'll love you back. If not, they'll we all come to the table and we'll agree to disagree. All right. Yeah, no, I mean, it. I, I was thinking about it earlier. It's like, you guys have been around for 25 years. You, you doubled the, the time that basically the dogs were around. You know what I'm saying? We started around the same time, and, and you guys were able to fight through all your, you know – I mean, you guys were able to to, to hang through all the all this time, right? Putting yeah, together really good different point. teams, you know, all the stuff where where you know the dogs, we had all that success, but hell, we we fell apart yeah. once in two thousand four, and then fell apart again in two thousand one. Yeah, yeah. Right? yeah. And so and you know, and, and we had all that success, but and so to see, you know, what you guys have done and how you guys have just kept chopping wood, man. Um, I mean, I'm I'm a, I, I'm a big fan. You guys, a couple couple years ago, you guys actually, you know, looked like uh, 
a really solid team. You guys had a little good run. Where was that? Wisconsin or whatever you guys Yeah, that was, yeah we, we came in uh, eighth in the Wisconsin. And um, we just finally, we just kept on, you know, digging and, and believing in each other. And um, first of all, uh, a lot of times that we had to get rid of a lot of dead weight on the team um, in order to go forward. So, yeah. you know, we had to change right. and rearrange. And um, because I realized something down through my beatball years, everybody on your ship ain't for you. <laughs> and, and you got to you got to change and rearrange and, and 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 keep believing in what you're doing and just just keep, you know keep moving forward. And and that's kind of the case though. That that's one area where beat baseball really does uh, translate to all sports. Like you know they talk about like professional players sometimes like they don't fit on one team they get traded and you see a totally different player like you know being being in the right place at the right time uh, you know what I mean and and rowing your oars in the same direction with everybody else on the on the same boat it, you know I mean there, there's a lot that goes into that and and sometimes uh getting rid of people who aren't rowing the same direction you are <laughs> it is addition by subtraction you know right I, I'm um, curious if I could ask like about uh, because I, I mentioned that you and you told me before we started the show that you've both played and coached. Ha, have you always been the the coach of the team, or did that come later? Well, that came later. Okay. Uh, because things wasn't going right with the co the coach that I had, so I was like, well. You know, I got to do everything. I was the coach and play it, <laughs> and it's getting me a spotter, you know, uh, to help me out here uh, on the field and, you know, build, build good volunteers around me. And um, I was able to do that. And even when um, the team faced a lot of criticism and stuff like that, um, I was still able to to keep them all together, no matter what people say, uh, I really thank God for that to try to, you know, to keep everybody together. Right. And even though you had hot heads all the way around right. on my team or, or in the NBBA or wherever, uh, not only that, where people's fundraising, uh, you know, giving you money and, you know, you had you know, people saying, you know, nasty things. But I had to, I had to keep pressing on. I couldn't worry about what people say because I love the game of beat baseball, and I wanted to present beat ball to every uh, upcoming blind athlete that's coming up. Right. Yeah. Right. And you know, and one and one other thing that you guys you guys do your own tournament every year, right? A breast cancer awareness tournament. Yeah. What, yes. what, 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 yeah, what's that all about? That? Yeah. Uh, well, first of all, I started off, my mother had uh, cancer. And um, so, and I was blind and I had to overcome a lot of obstacles in my life. And so, um, and I know that this lady, she had breast cancer. And so they was, everybody was walking around supporting breast cancer. And I said, well, well, let's put two events together you know mm -hmm. uh put pink in support of breast cancer and white is for blindness and so every year we would do what you call a texas shootout and we will release blooms for the ones that lost the battle to breast cancer or the one that losing their eyesight to um glaucoma or in uh whatever and we just wanted to lift everybody's spirit up and say, you know what, we're going to put God first and believe in each other. And we'll be able to uh, knock this disease out of the park. So that's why we came up with the Texas shootout, because it's a lot of people just going through a lot of things. And we just want to get out and show them that, hey, life, you know, goes on 
and no one's going to feel sorry for you if you're sitting in the corner. The world going to keep on spinning whether you're stressed out on it or sitting on top of it. So, blind, beat okay. baseball. We're going to support uh, breast cancer and any other type of disease. We're just going to we're just gonna get together and knock it out of the park. Uh, how, how long really has that touching. been going on? Uh, how long have you been uh, doing that? Twelve years, going on twelve years. Oh, wow. Wow. Now and the, also, the, the, the balloon thing kind of choked me up a little bit. Like that's that that whole thing's really cool. And uh, 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 what, what we do, what we do is that we have a uh, blind uh, blind awareness. Uh, king or queen and a breast cancer uh, king or queen because men have breast cancer too and we have people to come in and tell them they you know they start how they survive and uh, are overcoming uh, those type of problems you know I I didn't know that until recently uh, a long time friend of mine somebody I've known since uh, I was a teenager um, just like a year, two two years ago, contacted me that her son had breast cancer, and I, I didn't even know, I didn't even know that was possible. Right, and and it it is, and it's just to bring awareness out to everybody because I just feel like you know, you don't know, trouble is all around us, but. Every day and every day, every morning you wake up, trouble is at your doorstep. So right. we have to live life to the fullest. And, right. uh, you know, and we are all going to agree to disagree. But we all should be, we all should come together and try to defeat the enemy uh, of that disease. Uh-huh. Absolutely. No, that's good. That's I mean, good. I, I feel generic... Sorry, go ahead, sir. Go ahead, no, no. I, mean, I, I, no. I, I feel generic when I say it, but when people I, I know are going through, they get diagnosed with something heavy. Like I, I you know, I tell them keep fighting the good fight, and I'm not. It's not, you know, I'm not just saying it, moving. Like I, I want them to keep fighting the good fight. Right. You know, right? I, I want that out of them. Right. Um, and uh, uh, the last Texas shootout we had, we uh, we even brought it to um, we crowned a a junior queen, and she was um, she was visually impaired, but she was uh, affiliated with the Austin Blackhawks, and it's it's a opportunity to give the young athletes that's coming up behind us give them something to work towards and and look forward to. And you know, and they do positive thing in this world of negativity. Absolutely, absolutely. Going going back to uh, the the beatball part of your career, do you have a, a highlight that is something that stands out to you, or a part of your career as a coach or a player uh, that that means most to you? Yeah, in 1997, when we won the uh, Constellation Championship in Topeka, Kansas. Yeah. Um, that was where the Blackhawks was playing Wichita Sonics, and we was yeah. playing the Chicago Bluff. Did you guys play? Uh, for the audience that doesn't know, that uh, the NBBA now all the teams go into the championship bracket, but – uh, before 2006, it would always been two tournaments. After the round robin, the top half of the teams went to the championship round, and the bottom half went to the consolation bracket. Uh, right. Did you did you guys play on the same championship field um, for the consolation championship? Um, no, we uh, they played on the football field. And we yeah, played that's on why. The I asked. Field. Yeah, I remember. <laughs> I remember the final score of that championship game. It's crazy, like four to two or something. You know, Aust- yeah. Austin, Austin, and Wichita were two of the baddest offensive teams in the NBBA at that time. Right. I'd say outside of them, like Fort Worth was the only team you could probably put in that category offensively. And it's Seth and I didn't even go to the championship. We went out to lunch with Lupe Perez. Actually, I think no. We yeah, couldn't. No, he would have been with Austin, so it wasn't. It was just you and Christina and I, probably. 
and we we went out to lunch and came back and everybody's coming back for the championship game it's like yeah four to two it's like what <laughs> but <laughs> once you heard the grass was like 18 inches thick <laughs> it made sense so. yeah it was it was it was uh that was that was a good year um the exciting part is coming out of the hotel um and the last four teams just gonna play on that day. Yeah, yeah. Um, and a little Tyler Tigers um coming out is like, you know, I can remember that Friday we we no, it was uh Thursday, we we had to win the void double elimination. We played um, the Taiwan bats and we had we went on a winning streak. And we won all the way until Saturday because we had to play two games Saturday in order to win the championship against the uh, Chicago Bluff. Okay. And um, and that was a year that where Tyler had a long ball contest. When they used to have a long ball contest. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, and then they had the fastest women running contest. Um uh, it was it was a good year for Tyler that year, <laughs> but also in the um, and being a good year, it it was a bittersweet because when you got back to the hotel, you know you better enjoy it that uh, when you were coming out the field because chaos came out right later. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> going, going back to one thing you said through all that though like being I, that's something i always took a lot of pride in is it, when you're one of the last teams standing yeah. you know it's saturday morning and everybody's getting up with a hangover but you're getting up with your uniform on and heading for the field it's like you know what i mean you walk through the i've always walked through the hotel with pride so yeah that's us we're you know <laughs> that's us that's what we do so yeah. I feel and it. also with, with, with saying that, um, as being one of the youngest teams uh, walking through the hotel that Saturday morning when, you know, um, the Austin Blackhawks is playing and you got Tyler is playing, um, you know, that was, that was amazing right. to me right. to up. overcome, you know, to be on the same – deal with like you know Kevin and you know and the uh the hop hop offense and we just lit lit peons we just trying to <laughs> make a little we just trying to make a little noise and <laughs> but you know we just play together and just keep that's why I tell everybody hey you're gonna agree to, you're gonna have this uh you're gonna agree to disagree but if you hang on in there and don't give up so quick, you know, uh, brighter days is right there in front of you. You Man, just when, got to keep grinding. When you talk about, uh, you know, we talked about your 95 season, and for you guys to get to the 97, you know, consolation yeah, championship right. game, you know, two years later after the 95 fiasco, that, that that's a nice, uh, you know, yeah. that, that was a nice progression. You should be proud of that. I see why it stands out to you. We're going to uh, bring JC in for a while. And, and, and kinda, <laughs> hey, kinda... I, I'll just say, as a, just as a, a, a note, our, my, my timekeeping uh, I, that's has gone a little sale. long. That's... <laughs> yeah. No, no. We're, we're... Yeah, I, I got the, uh, I got I was, the time. If you're uh, interested, no, no. Uh, wait, we're doing two parts. No, we're, I, I already accepted that. Uh, I, I want you know, I wasn't going to alert the audience to it yet, though. <laughs> but <laughs> but uh, this, this show is officially part one of this interview. Right? <laughs> uh, but JC. So, JC, man, let's jump right in, man. You go back to 2001, you said, man. How You were pretty young, man. How old were you? How did you get in? Uh, I was 11 years old. Uh, Doc Bradley uh, was the way I got started. Um, I was not such a good kid growing up, and I was always getting into things and, you know, during the summer breaks and stuff like that. So my mom, uh, her friend worked at the multi-service center that where we practice that still to this day. Um, and she knew Doc Bradley. I guess they maybe had a conversation before uh, that they needed volunteers. So 
I was kind of forced to volunteer. <laughs> but, you know, <laughs> I ended up liking it. And, uh, you know, I stuck with it, man. And, uh, you know, uh, I was just excited with the, the possibility of traveling and, and everything like that, which I had <laughs> never really done before prior to that. So, um, you know, my first year was in Cleveland, Ohio. Yeah, 2001. Yeah, yeah. Strong were catching. Or what were you doing? You were the catcher. You're always the catcher, right? Or did you spot? Yeah, I was the catcher. No, I didn't spot at that time. It was just strictly the catcher and yeah, volunteer. I, yeah. I, that's what I was going to ask you to do, actually. So since you started out as an 11 year old and you're, you know, a head coach now, 20 years later, what what was your what what was your 20 year road? You know, how, what what were all the roles you played? Um, I was a catcher for a while, all the way up until 2011, and I may have spotted a couple times, but it really wasn't a spot, of just a catcher, and then all of a sudden, I was a coach. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the coach you know, or a coach? Yeah. Hey, no, hey, deal. The coach. The yeah. coach. Just, just <laughs> coach. <laughs> you know, and – um. You know, uh, it's been a lot of ups and downs with the coaching thing, and uh, but I was – I'm going to tell you this. I'll say this, and everybody in Houston knows that I never wanted to be the coach. Everybody knows that. Uh, because it's such – it's such uh, – it's a lot uh, that you have to to deal with as a coach, um, especially with our team. We don't have a lot of volunteers, so, you know, you don't have the help necessarily that you need. And I think a lot of people forget about that. And, um, you know, um, as the season goes on with the fundraising, because we don't get, you know, grants and stuff like some teams do, um, that would be nice, but we don't get those type of grants. Um, right. We have to go out and actually put in the work as far as the fundraising, because, you know, uh, the, uh, the World Series and the other tournaments are not, are not cheap. They're very expensive to get to. So, you know, it's, it's kind of difficult. I would say that's probably the biggest challenge um, <sighs> for me as a coach. Yeah, and yeah, in mean, the I, end, I, I remember, oh, go ahead, yeah. well, it I'll just a uh, real, real, yeah, hold your thought because just a quick yeah. thing. Like as far as you like the coaching and the the responsibility, it's like any part of leadership, whether it's beat ball or anything else, it like it comes with so much responsibility and usually very little appreciation. Like you're always, you know what I mean? Like you're, you, anybody in leadership is normally, is normally doing the job wrong to most people. So, you know what I mean? You have to just be committed to wanting the job done. You know what I mean? So yeah, I'm glad props, you said that. Like, you. I, you know, yeah, that, that's exactly how it is. You know what I'm saying? And you put in so much work and, you know, uh, like you said, that, you know, when people don't get their way, they think that you're just so wrong and, you know, they just have it. They have no clue. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it, no it's clue. funny because yeah. I've had conversations with JC. It's like, man, that's just the life of a coach, man. Everybody's going to second guess your, your decision. Oh, yeah. it, it, it's yeah. hard. But but I was just going to say about coach, right, the, I mean, because I was there, right? I, I was part of the heat when, when that switch happened. And, and, and Charles Boudreau, our longtime coach, he, before I was there, right, had to retire. And it was like, you know, who's, who's going to be the coach? And I personally, coming from the dogs, my thought in, in, in meeting JC, I was like, man, it has to be JC. Man, JC, he, 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 he's so calm. He's so, like, focused on, you know, what people need to actually do. Um, you know, he, he's into the game. I was just like, man, it's, it's, it's got to be JC. JC will be the one that can uh, – uh, you know, take us to that to that next level. And I remember the meeting, JC. He's like, man, I don't want to be coach. I'm like, man, JC, it don't matter, man. <laughs> you know, sometimes we got to do, you know, do what that, we don't want to do, man. <laughs> in, in the end, that's kind of the boat the dogs were in when Don stepped down. Because, uh, you know, Don stepped down as our coach after the 97 season. And and we're looking at Chris Hunsucker like, man, you know, you're the best man for the job. He's like, ah, I don't want to do that. <laughs> well, <laughs> he got <gots> to. <laughs> so, hey, so, JC, what was your first your first World Series as coach like? Right. Was, was it uh, was it more, you know, was it, you know, what, what you expected? Was it? You know, what was it? What, what was it like when, when you finally took the reins of, of that big responsibility? 
Well, I don't think it was as hard. Um, you know, with the Bayou City Heat at that time, it was 2011 or 2012. I can't remember which year. It was one of those years. It was in Ames, Iowa. You know, we had a pretty good team already. Um, and Charles Charles Boudreau uh, most definitely did a great job of kind of grooming me late minute. You know, I didn't know till the beginning of the season that he was not going to return. But, uh, you know, I, I learned a lot from Charles over the years and watched him. Uh, but Ames, Iowa, I remember that where, that's where we were. We finished third place. Uh, we lost to Taiwan 15-10. to 10. I'll never forget that. And I cried like a baby, man, because I just wanted to win so bad. Man. It was just – it was uh, very disheartening for, for us to lose that game the way we did. Um, and that's what I remember. So it was, it was most definitely motivating, um, and I just wanted to do – better every year you know um uh you know with the challenges and all you know but it's it 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 was probably my most favorable my most favorable year uh as coach that's 2012 yeah 2012 i believe that was the year in ames iowa yeah it was yeah yeah you know just just between uh you and me jc i'll i'll edit this out of the show so seth doesn't hear but how how frustrating is it to coach seth Oh man, it can be frustrating at times. <laughs> you know, it can be frustrating at times because once self gets his mind set on something, oh my goodness, man! Oh my, he doesn't shut up about it at all. That's he, it. He, you know, it's he not get me in the mode. You know, I'm trying to focus on other things. He's Jerry C. Jerry C. Hey, hey, would you leave me alone? Hey. <laughs> I'm trying to focus on other things. I got other people asking me questions. I, you know, just leave me alone, please. Oh, <laughs> yeah, but he's, he's he's cool, man. You know, I I, I look up to Seth, man, and Seth is a is a great guy, a great father. You know, and uh, you know, um, he's he's a little difficult at times, but I I accept it from Seth. You know, it couldn't be anybody else, man. But I I accept it from him. Yeah, I, 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 I even I even let JC retire me at the last World Series, and I didn't even get mad at him. Yeah. No, nah, you're not retired, man. Jeff, <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know, I hear, I heard you say that you know back in your younger days you were uh, you know you had some some issues, and I seem to remember a story when I came on the Heat about the 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 Heat players throwing you out. In your underwear oh, into the hallway. <laughs> oh man, you have overall to bring that up, man. The, the Texas the Texan what? teams take hazing way further than any <laughs> other people. I'm just saying, it, what, were they justified in that, JC? Tell tell me if uh, they were justified in that. Right? Yeah, I won't necessarily say it was hazing. I probably deserved it, but it wasn't in my underwear. I was completely new. <laughs> oh. Uh, yeah, we were in Cleveland, Ohio. That's, this is my first year. And it was Daryl Miner, uh, John Kibido, and I know – I can't remember. I, oh, it was – what is Mary's uh, – Mary's son's name. Oh, I can't remember his name. Oh. Uh, yeah, I didn't I even know she had Robert, a son. Robert. 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 Robert, Queen. Robert, Robert I remember Queen. Mary, though. Yeah, Robert's yeah. like six yeah. eight or whatever. He's oh, wow. huge. Yeah. Wow. Uh, he's big and big. you know, I'm a little kid. You know, I'm a little kid. You know, it's my first year. I'm eleven. And man, you know, I deserve it. But I was doing all kind of stuff, man. You know, I, <laughs> I had never really been around blind people like that. So I thought it was funny to act like I wasn't in the room. Uh, I thought it was funny to just, you know, just get quiet and just start throwing M and M's at their heads and just <laughs> doing stuff like that. <laughs> you know, doing little dumb stuff, you know what I'm saying? And then, yeah. you know, of course, you know, not really noticing that they can actually hear, you know, they they really pay attention. Their hearing is so sharp. They can tell where I'm at where I'm at at the time. <laughs> and so they got me cornered one day in the in the room and they took all of my clothes off and <laughs> put me in the hallway naked. <laughs> no, it was a lady in the hallway. She was uh, she was a uh, housekeeping, 
And she was just was like, oh, poor baby. <laughs> when you get your child, y'all open this door right now. We're opening this door right now. And then all I had to see, all I had to say was, hey, uh, you know, Boudreaux was walking around the corner. He didn't see me at all, but they knew he was around the corner. And they hurry up and open that door and let me back in because they didn't want any hell. <laughs> they hurry up and open the door. I remember that, man. That was crazy. I should have just pissed on all of them, man. That's what I did. Yeah. It's, it's, it's so hard for me to think of JC as like hiding in the corner throwing M&Ms at blind people for, you know, for fun. <laughs> you see him Putting so around. <laughs> putting saran wrap on the toilet seats and stuff, and, you know, crazy stuff like that, man. Yeah. <laughs> so I deserve, I deserved it, man. You know, it wasn't really hazy, but you know, I learned from that. And did the joke? I mean, did the prank stop? No, they didn't. I just got smarter and never, yeah. you know, I realized that, you know, hey, that they they know where I am. You'll so fight back. I'll do prank. Yeah, I'll fight back. But I came back ten times bigger than the one. No, I, I said we're gonna time. fight back. <laughs> I don't yeah. know about us. Then. Your t- your T they fought back. You Eminem yeah. and Roller. Mm-hmm. Uh, My kids have been trying to figure out a way to get JC. You can't get JC. <laughs> JC is the king of pranks, baby. It's, 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 it's been a challenge that they have been on for several World Series now to get JC. So, <laughs> JC JC's paranoid. He 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 locks the door when he showers and stuff like that because he, he knows people are going <laughs> to come get him and stuff. Man. You act like you didn't do the same stuff around us. <laughs> yeah, I never threw him in that. No, but you dumped a whole <laughs> ice chest of ice on me when I was taking an ice bath once. <laughs> And then well, what? I, I would tell you, I Go would ahead. tell you this one prank, man. I did. I'd never forget it, man. I thought I had this guy, and I knew it probably was going to be a fight with it if it succeeded. Frank Fascio, I put saran wrap on his toilet. I for sure thought, and I hope nobody's eating it when they hear this, but I thought for sure that I was going to get him. And he sat on the toilet, and I must have <laughs> had some cheap saran wrap. Uh, it fell straight through. <laughs> it might... I thought for sure I had it. Hey. I was like, oh, my goodness. And he said, he said, nice try. Hey. I said, oh, my goodness, man. <laughs> for the audience sake, you know, Frank's like 6'5", 280. On a good yeah. day. So it, it yeah. might not have been a problem with the saran wrap, but maybe <laughs> the, the weight pushing it. <laughs> yeah, most definitely. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Seto, you got anything else before we uh, wrap this you, part you know, up? JC, time in? You know, JC, uh, you know, just talking about your, your, uh, your coaching career, because I'm always interested in coaching. What's something you, like, regret? like from the field like did, did were there any moves that you made anything like you could say back look back now um you know I mean, yeah we made it to the championship game um i mean is there is there anything that you look back like ah, yeah i shouldn't have done that <laughs> it would have been better if we i just would have left that alone uh you mean like on the field or just in general yeah you, you know yeah on the field or you know yeah. i mean not like you know yeah, you know, just the, on the field, you look back like, at your coach. Yeah, you, you look back at your you. coaches. Yeah, you look back at your coaching. Uh, as far as on the field, um, I would say, man, it's one game that just I always wonder what would have happened. Um, we were playing uh, the Colorado Storm, and I think this is maybe the second time that we went to Ames. And we were playing them, and the game was just – it went into overtime, and we had just talked about, you know, being focused and, and not making mistakes and, and stuff like that. And, you know, those – I don't know – people remember the, those sidelines, those tents were very close to the baseline. Right. And, uh, I mean, that game was very important. It was uh, the third-place game, and – or whatever, and uh, man, Tanner Gears ran and was about to run over your parent. But that do you remember that? <laughs> yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he was yeah. about to run over your parent, 
and I right. said stop. That was the first thing I had I had to say was stop. And I right. I kind of wonder because as soon as I said stop, he corrected himself. Right. I thought it just waited a split second. You know what I'm saying? And, you know maybe he would have corrected himself, but you know it wasn't the best hit ball. I don't. I just always wonder because that was the difference. Right. That was, that was the difference. difference. Right. Yeah. In the game. Yeah. That, that I, I just. Right. It it didn't decide on whether we lost or not because I think somebody else struck out or yeah, whatever. But still had it, it was, yeah. Yeah. But you know, I think maybe Jacory struck out or something like that. But you know, I just always wonder, you know, um, you know, what would have happened if I didn't say stop? He probably still would have got out because, like I said, the ball wasn't hit very well. But I mean, we needed that game, and um, you know, of course, when you lose to Colorado. You know, they don't let you forget. You know what I'm saying? They're going to always bring it up. And, you, know, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> you know, some of those guys over there. I, I really respect I, res- I really respect those guys, and I, I wish that team still existed. But, um, you know, they, they you did not want to lose to Colorado. That's for sure. I, I'm going right. to say for humanity reasons you did the right thing because Seth's dad is old and frail, and if Tanner Durs <laughs> ran him over, you know what I mean? We'd, we'd, we'd be pushing the old man around in a wheelchair now. <laughs> well, it was funny because he said, I, I felt the wind, you know. I felt the wind. <laughs> I like, yeah, man, he was close, you know. I mean, he was uh, like a, an inch away from hitting you, man. He was like, I'm glad you said something, man. He I felt the wind when he ran by. Man. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know, I know, and the Tanner was pissed, man. He was pissed at me, you know, and I thought we were going to oh, go to blows man. after that one, man, you know. But, you know, I, I just – for Tanner's sake, I didn't want him to get hurt. At the time, Tanner was still uh, doing the Paralympic deal. And, uh, yeah, you know, and then not only was Self's dad sitting there, but Self's mom was sitting there also, and I just couldn't have that happen, you know what I'm saying. So, you know, things oh, happen man. for a reason. You know, and I, I'll tell Tanner to this day, if he would have ran straight, we wouldn't have had that situation. So, you know, <laughs> that's, that's just what it was. You know, so Tanner, if you're hearing that, hey, it was no fault. Yeah, right. <laughs> I will say, you know, Tanner, was Tanner was pissed. Tanner yeah, was pissed. He was pissed, but it, oh well. It, it was know. a great call. But it was it, it was that elimination game. So Yeah, that, it was that, an elimination that, game. That, we that put loomed, him in a test spot. Large. Uh, that was large, man. Well, yeah, good. Right. No, I, I just always wonder about that. On that I have note, other things coach. that I regret, though. Mm-hmm. On that you note, share? for a couple of reasons. Uh, me, me, retiring me? No, I'm just fucking. I'm sorry. No, I'm just messing around. Uh, now <laughs> I, just, now I got right explicit. There you go. Yeah, right. Exactly, man. I said fudge. I said fudge. <laughs> All right, look, for a couple of reasons, most importantly, because I got a pee, a big surprise, Uh, but we got more that we're going to be doing, so I'm not going to dive into a long goodbye, because we're going to sit here and record part two that the audience is going to hear next week, so I'm going to stop that part of it right here, and I'm just going to say to everybody, thank you for checking this out. You're going to have a lot more that you're going to want to check out next week with Uh, Larry Reed and JC, we are going to have some heavy adult talk that needs to be heard. So I hope you come back for all that. In the meantime, be smart, be safe, be considerate, wear your mask, even if you live in Texas, people, (laughs) wear your mask. (laughs) Make sure you wear your mask. Absolutely. Good man, Larry. Sleep in it. Yeah. And we will see you people next week. Good night, Aunt Cindy.